today we're going to continue working on the fifth generation foreigner straight axle project and going to continue working with cardboard. Stay tuned. Hey bros, another day working on the fifth generation foreigner straight axle project here. In yesterday's episode, we left off on making the front Super Duty axle bridge, and we got that all designed up. The next step for that piece is to get that put in the designing computer and get that put in there digitally. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and move on to making the center frame cradle piece. That's what holds your front four link tubes and your rear four link tubes. That's what actually your hind joints go into and they bolt into there. So we're going to go ahead and get that piece designed up out of cardboard, and then we'll design it and then we'll move on to designing the rear axle bridge as well with its bag mounts. So before we uh, put those into the computer, we just want to get them all made out of cardboard and then we'll get them in the computer. And then as soon as our Bailey handheld piece comes from Bailey's for our 2x2 CNC plasma table, we'll be able to actually start cutting parts out. But we're just kind of doing the stuff with cardboard and kind of going to work with the computer after that. Of while we're waiting for that handheld piece to come or we'd already be cutting out parts and we kind of be doing frame plating and be piecing it together on the corner as, as we work but we're just kind of trying to stay stay busy and continue moving forward on the project so let's get started guys alrighty so after thinking about it for the night Scott is interested in any ideas I might have to move the bags out, which is good. Um, for one, that'll make the truck more stable. For two, that'll make our pan hard bar longer, which is really good because right now it's not even two feet long on a truck that's jacked way up in the air. So that's not necessarily a great combo. Um, yeah, so I'll show you what I got going on, or what I'm going to have going on, rather. Basically, what I want to do is throw a piece right there. I guess I'll have to kind of go that way because this is short. If this was 3 eighths longer, that'd be great. That'd be great. Maybe a half inch. But anyway, I want a piece to come down, tuck in all that, and it'll actually angle back a little bit because just the fact that this is offset. Angle back there. There will be a piece of flat plate. Sorry, probably can't even see what I'm doing. Angle back there, there'll be a piece of flat plate there that'll bolt on, and there'll be another piece on the back side that angles across there. And the top of it will remain level with this. It'll kind of arc back a little bit and then over whatever. Then the bag can sit on that. It'll still bolt on, so it'll be strong there. We don't have to weld it. It'll be welded there. And it might still, I'd, I'd weld it anyway. Who cares? Um, yeah. So it should be good. And then that'll move our bags out. We can make a shock mount come off the back or whatever. I think off the back would be good. Then we'd have some room. Um, do, 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 do. What else? Then we can modify this up a little bit. We can take however much of that off we want. Probably like that much or whatever. Um, can modify that other side. I'll have to do some more calculations for the pan hard bar, but that's fine because it's going to be better. If it's longer than 23 and a half inches um, especially with the amount of travel and how much it yeah how much travel the pan hard bar would have before it starts doing bad things um, right now with this setup it would only have about four inches of down travel before it smacked the top of this brace um, so yeah, which isn't really great because the bags have 10 inches of travel. About, it's a little bit more. But um, anyway, this is gonna be good. It's gonna help fix a lot of problems as long as Scott approves. So let's make it pretty. Stop calling them Brandon's log and call them Brandon's monologue. Think I'm think I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hear me now. Good. Look at this. This is only one piece and I like it already. Look at that, huh? A little bit of a gap there. Tape will fix that. Yeah. Eh, it doesn't look that impressive from there, but I don't know. It looks cool from here. All right, so that'll do that. Then the other piece will basically be the same shape. Um, I guess not, because that'll be wider. But anyway, come out a little bit, and it'll angle in. Sorry. Come out, and then it'll angle in. Follow the contours of that. Then I'll use the top of this to sculpt this flat. This is actually really close. I thought it was going to be farther off. Um, it's, yeah, it's pretty close. Okay, so yeah, it's working out well. Then I'll make the piece the contours there that would get welded on there. Make the top flat so the bag can mount on that surface. Come on, focus. You're killing me. Then we can modify all this stuff. We'll change that up just so it looks prettier instead of being flat. We'll add some of those compound angles in there, make it look like an old cantilever bridge or something. Um, then when all this is good to go, at whatever point, then we'll uh, put all the triangles and whatnot inside of it or whatever shapes we decide to use, make it all crazy looking. Make it all hollow. Um, I might end up bringing my laptop over and using my CAD program if it can export the files in the format that the plasma cutter needs. I think it can. I just kind of put it on sheet metal mode. But um, ah, it's just easier for me to use. I'm way more comfortable with that one than I am this new one. This new one's, for me, it's difficult because it's ancient. So for this extension on here, it's uh, let's see five and a half more inches, which is actually kind of a big deal because the let's see that's five inches, so that would be six there. So that gives us this gives us four and a half more inches on each side of width, which is quite a bit. It's actually quite a lot, especially when you consider that now from end to end. It is, it's about 51 inches. So that minus 12 for the width of the bag mounts is 39. And the frame is 34 inches on the outside. So that gives us, what, third, I lost my math. Two and a half, two and a half inches on each side that the bag can sit past the frame. Or at least the bag mount. Two and a half, bam. And the bag's going to protrude out another inch when it's, it just sticks out an inch past the mount point. Um, yeah, so that's awesome. So the frame can be here, and the outermost point of the bag can be doo -doo 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 -doo, right there, past the frame, which is huge, because then it'll be over here instead of over here. There, there way more difference, especially since our pan hard bar was only that long, sorry, that long, right there, which is uh, tiny, really tiny. And like I was saying before, the pan hard bar with the amount of travel and everything is uh, it's a little short, so it'd be nice to have it longer because then it won't be this big of a deal. In geometry will be better and the maths will be better and stuff. So yeah. Um, what else? Yeah, so if we do that, this is all super stable. That little piece is inside there. I'll pan in a second. It matches all that super rad. I can even make it tuck around that if we want it to. Maybe. It'd be pretty hard to get on, but it'd probably be doable. We'll see. Um, we can make our shock mount stick out the back here, which I think would be super rad if we put a plate 
kind of here, made that one side of the shock mount, and then made the other piece stick out here, and boom, big old gnarly shock mount. The only thing we'd have to check, oh yeah, there's plenty of room, I think, because the tires are going to be super offset, like on the other one, probably even more offset, I don't know. So there should be plenty of room right here for a shock mount. I mean, the bag is probably going to be something like that. So it needs to stick past. Actually, it'll be like right there. So the shock's going to need to be out like here, which is a pretty good ways. I'm not going to lie. That's a good distance. But uh, that's okay. Because we can make a big gnarly mount and look freaking sick. And it'd be super nice and stable, and the geometry would be good, and the maths would be good. And everything would just be good. So, let's push for this design. See what happens. I'm gonna do some more trigonometry BS and uh, see where the new panhard mount is gonna be on this end. Because uh, it's gonna be in the same spot on that side. But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to do that. Exploring this route for a variety of reasons, one of which is going over the numbers and everything yesterday, I realized something that I hadn't realized. I forgot this part of the frickin' frame was higher than that. I was using the measurements off of that to the ground, a ride height, instead of that, which is a lot higher. Freaking rookie move. That was definitely a rookie move. Killing me. Well, anyway, that's actually good news because it gives us a lot more room to work with, which is what we need right now. Um, cool thing is, with moving the pan hard bar and um, blah, figuring out that, I can move that two inches higher, which would be good because of clearances over here and all this when it moves and also I can move whatever the bag mount surfaces are so like right here this area that can go up an inch higher and it'll equalize everything with the other brackets um, and then we can dish out these areas or whatever I really don't like the flat spots just, the flat spots need to go away and something else needs to happen there but um, they're only flat right now because this is this was our bag mount um, yeah, this flat spot annoys me, but it'll be fine. Um, uh, yeah. So with this, theoretically, I just have to duplicate that and then put it on the other side. Um, I'm going to trace those ones and see if they'll work. I mean, it's never that simple. I know something somewhere or somehow is going to be totally different. I'm going to change it up a little bit, but I'm going to try it. All right, to get started, Brandon's down, down here measuring the frame of how long he wants our cradle piece to be, and then we're going to go ahead and make, like, we're, we're going to run big radius arms for it. We're going to do, like, a really cool shaped, CNC-shaped radius arm. It'll curve kind of down and mount to the Super Duty axle and then come up with a single point at the cradle for the front and then a single point for the back. You know, we're not going to have a lot of stress on this suspension, so it'll be a good setup for us. Um, and then, yeah, you know, a lot of people would normally say, hey, there's, that would, you know, screw up your pinion angle and stuff, but, you know, we're going to have it, you know, air up and air down, but it'll just air down to get into and stuff, and then it'll air up to ride height, and, and at that ride height is where all the geometry will be at where it needs to, to make the truck drive nice. Um, and then, so th that won't be a big concern for us, so that's why we're going to go ahead and do that method. So we're going to go ahead and get these measurements all done, and then... Start cutting out some cardboard and start designing this piece up. So, cue the music.
Now that Brandon's got our cradle made of how he basically wants it, you know, basic out of cardboard, he'll go ahead and make his inner piece so that way it's got, you know, his inner and your outer and your hind sits between. And then he'll make a middle piece. And then his outer piece will go all the way up the front of the frame or the outside of the frame rail to go three quarters up so you can weld up and around, you know what I mean? It'll be like an L shape. And then now that he's got that, he'll go ahead and tape an inner piece together on it and make it 3D so we have a basic look of how it's going to look. And then we'll move on to the rear Super Duty axle bridge with its integrated bag mounts. Now that Brandon's got our cradle made and made into a 3D shape, he's gonna go, we're gonna go ahead and look at it on the foreigner just to you know check it out. Check it out, guys. Our little you know cart things in the way, but you get the idea what it's gonna be basically looking like in there. Yeah, buddy. Now that we're finished up with that and we've got an idea of what it's going to look like sitting on the frame, we're going to go ahead and move on to the rear axle and get its bridge made up. All right, so here's our rear 05 to 2010 Super Duty axle. So we just got to plasma cut those leaf spring mounts off, but we're out of plasma cutting tips for the Miller 650 or whatever it is. Ex extreme is what it is, an extreme 650? Yeah, it's an extreme 625. Anyways, rambling about that. We need to get some more tips for it. We're out of them, and then we can get those cut off. But in the meanwhile, we're going to go ahead and make our bridge, and then we can just cut those out, and then in the computer, we'll just fill those in. So, all right, let's get started. Cue the music. That ends another day working with cardboard on our fifth generation straight axle project here, or 400 straight straight axle project. So we got our center cradle designed and made up how we want it out of cardboard, and then we started making our rear bridge out of cardboard, and we got like one of the sides done. Like we'll have to uh, come in tomorrow and finish the front side and make a top plate piece for it, and then we'll move on to figuring out our radius arms. We're going to cut those out of a big piece of masonite we got over there in the corner of the garage. We got a big piece, four by eight piece of masonite, so we can make a big radius arm. And we'll use our router table here to kind of shape it how we want it because, you know, there's no cardboard that big and I don't really want to go down to the appliance center to go get a big refrigerator box or something and we got that masonite to use up. And it's quarter inch too, so it'll be accurate just like this other cardboard we're using to what size steel that we're going to cut all these parts out of. So, all right, guys, thanks for being here tonight. Thanks for your constant support, as always. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking and subscribing. And if you guys want to see more of Cougar House Garage, you want to follow along with the fifth generation foreigner straight axle project here, check us out at cougarhousegarage.com. Check us out at Facebook forward slash Cougar House Garage. And we are Cougar House Garage on Instagram. Follow us, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.